The European Central Bank was the first major bank to start a rate cutting cycle last month. Will it continue to cut rates this month as well? This is the week ahead. Thanks for joining us at XM.com. I'm Cristina Marujos, and with me today to unpack the week ahead is our lead investment analyst, Raf Boyajian. So, Rafi, the ECB meets on Thursday amid sticky inflation. Do you think policymakers will deliver another 25 basis points cut? Well, Christina, it was looking pretty certain a few weeks ago that uh, you know that we would get back-to-back rate cuts, uh, but then of course. Uh, things start to go wrong for the ECB because, of course, uh, last month's rate cut uh, was um, had been uh, telegraphed well in advance. Uh, but right before the meeting, we start to get some uh, worrying data, which kind of contradicted uh, with the uh, you know with the thinking that rate cut uh, you know the timing of a rate cut uh, was correct at the June meeting. Uh, so the ECB is now in a situation where they really need to uh, wait a little bit before cutting again. Um, so as you know, it's pretty certain we're not going to get any policy changes uh, at the July decision, uh, but there will be some focus on what exactly, uh, how they're actually going to word their statement, as well as, of course, President Lagarde's uh, press briefing, uh, because um, on the whole, we we are hearing from uh, ECB officials that most of them do support one at least one more rate cut this year. So the question mark really is about whether or not we're going to get a third rate cut in 2024 uh, as well. Um, looking at the data, uh, inflation did tick a little bit lower uh, in June. Uh, we're going to get the final, final, those final estimates uh, next week uh, as well. Um, but wage growth uh, is proving to be uh, wage pressures are proving to be a little bit more per- persistent than the ECB had hoped. Um, so I think right now the ECB will want to sit out uh, the rest of the summer uh, and see where things stand in September. Uh, but the question is for the euro: Is Lagarde going to, you know, give us an explicit? signal uh, that we should expect a rate cut in September, or is she going to be a little bit more vague, as in saying, uh, most likely it will be appropriate to ease again, but not really commit to any particular time frame. Um, so if she takes that approach, this might be seen as a little bit more hawkish. Uh, we could see uh, the euro gain a little, bit, a little bit on the back of that. Now let's cross to the United Kingdom. A plethora of data releases in the UK will keep pound traders on their toes, particularly the all-important CPI report on Wednesday. How could we see sterling perform this week? So sterling is really having a fantastic time at the moment against the US dollar. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's reclaimed the 1.29 handle. Um, and so we've had some positive News. Uh, some uh, f- f- well, first of all, we had the UK general election, uh, which gave us a strong Labour win. So, although Labour might not necessarily be as positive for the economy as, say, the Conservatives, but I think this uh, Labour government under Keir Starmer definitely, um, you know, it has promised they're not going to go to too much to the left. Uh, they're going to s- stick to the centre. Uh, so they're not going to do anything to say in terms of uh, big rate high or big uh, spending increases. So markets are pleased about that. And of course, uh, with the strong majority, we get to have a a stable government. Uh, But then we've also been having some uh, upbeat economic data. We had the upward revision to the first quarter GDP growth numbers. Uh, We saw stronger than expected GDP growth for the month of May. And then we could also see very strong growth over the summer period uh, as well. Uh, And this has raised question marks whether or not the Bank of England will be able to start cutting rates uh, as early as the August meeting. Now, the inflation data on the face of it does support a rate cut soon because the headline figure did fall to 2%. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, where inflation goes, you know, whether it maybe rises a little bit uh, in June or maybe falls below 2%. Uh, so the CPI data will be crucial to the August decision. Um, but, uh, you know, the Bank of England will be looking at the details, um, not just the uh, underlying measure of inflation, but also, um, you know, a more uh, focused measure on 
services inflation, which does remain quite high. Uh, and also the jobs data next week is going to be quite important as well because wage growth has been moderating uh, very slowly. Uh, so Bank of England will want to see some positive signs in terms of services inflation and wage growth before it can feel more confident about cutting rates as early as the August meeting. Uh, because, you know, if the economy is doing well, um, you know, there's not going to be that urgency uh, to cut rates. So I think um, you know, the, the upcoming data will be quite crucial for sterling. If we get any downside surprises, uh, definitely that could trigger a round of profit taking uh, for the pound. Now, Rafi, let's look at the U.S. dollar. We'll have to digest uh, increasing market bets of a September Fed rate cut and, of course, retail sales data out on Tuesday. How could we see the greenback perform this week? So the dollar really has come under heavy selling pressure. Uh, now, of course, uh, this past week we had Powell uh, testifying in Congress. Uh, it's a bit difficult to judge, you know, whether he was being hawkish or dovish. Uh, I guess he definitely kept the door wide open to an early rate cut, uh, but he was non-committal, uh, so that was that could be also interpreted as uh, a little bit hawkish. Uh, but I think what's really changed things uh, for the dollar uh, is that CPR report for June, which came in below expectations. Uh, so clearly now we're getting a more clear uh, evidence that inflation is now headed down again. Um, you know, this was of course the main reason why the Fed, uh, you know, didn't uh, make, has, hasn't already uh, cut rates, uh, but now September rate cut is looking more and more certain and markets are maybe thinking, well, you know what, we might even get a third rate cut possibly uh, this year, uh, which is unlikely, but you know, some investors are going uh, to the, that way. Uh, now, the, the other, th Good thing for red card expectations, maybe not so much for the economy, is that consumption has also been slowing. So, you know, the retail sales numbers uh, next week will be, uh, you know, a further update on, you know, where things stand in terms of consumption. Uh, we're expecting flat growth uh, for the month of June. Uh, any unexpected rebound there uh, might see those rate cut bets being paired back a little bit, and we might see the dollar perhaps uh, uh, recoup some of its re uh, latest losses. And finally, let's look at China. We'll be getting GDP data for quarter two. Should we be worried about a worsening situation in China? Well, markets are... They are worried. I think what we've seen, though, is that at the same time, uh, they've kind of given up on expecting big stimulus from the Chinese uh, government. Uh, so the GDP, GDP data will tell us, you know, whether things are improving or not. Probably looking at the forecast, uh, we're expecting a slowdown uh, year on year from 5.3 to 5.1 percent for the second quarter. We're also going to get uh, the latest monthly readings on industrial output and retail sales. Um, now, exports have helped industrial output uh, do a little bit better, but consumption remains uh, fairly subdued. Um, and yet the Although, you know, as I said, markets not expecting any major uh, stimulus packages, we can't rule out any surprise announcements next week because um, we are going to have the third plenum this is, of course, part of seven plenums uh, that the Communist Party leaders hold every five years to basically set out the agenda for the next uh, five years. Uh, and uh, the third plenum is the one that they discuss economic policies. Uh, now, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be followed up by uh, actual policy measures, uh, but, you know, you can't rule out any surprises. So that's something to keep an eye on. Otherwise, uh, I think if we get any downside surprises in G GDP numbers, that could weigh on sentiment at the start of the trading week. Rafi, thanks so much. If you like this video, make sure to give us a like and of course subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all financial news by XM. This was the week ahead. Thanks for watching.